Boom, we are in. We are live. We've got a lot of people with us already. So let's see. Let's do a, uh, well, before we do a roll call, I will um, give a plug for at uh, 1 o'clock Central Time. I will have Mark Herman on at 1 o'clock. Uh, he will be coming in, and we will be focusing on his time when he was with Victory Games, again at 1 o'clock, and working with Avalon Hill. So I will also let it be known, I've been uh, communicating via email and snail mail with Tom Shaw, Thomas Shaw. And uh, he sent me some stuff, and uh, he's fairly old now, uh, 90 plus, I think, and his hearing is not good enough to come on the show. Um, he said he couldn't even do a, uh, like a, a thing on the phone because he can't hear even with hearing aids in. So we're, I'm, I'm composing questions and using some cool things he sent me and his book. And then I will do a recorded show where I'm both showing you the questions, his answers, talking about things from his book and from the material that he has sent me. So um, I will tell you, uh, I got real excited. His uh, part, well, hold on, it's part of his email is called Mando Tom. And you know what I was thinking, Judd? What was I thinking? Oh, yeah, the Mandalorian. Yeah, hello. Hey. Now, it still might be, but he also was in a band called Last Time Out where he played the mandolin. So I believe, although it will yeah. be a question, a non-serious gaming question will be, are you a Star Wars Mandalorian fan, or is that because you play the Mandalorian? I'm giving ten to one odds on the mandolin. Mandolin, sorry. yeah, not you play the Mandalorian, the mandolin. Yeah, I think that's probably why it's Mando Tom. Uh, but I was, you should have seen. I was like, woo, and then I got to looking and finding out, and I saw a picture of him in a band. So that, um, of course, the uh, the uh, show with Mark Herman's later today. It'll be after we're off, so anybody can see that it's posted where you can pop back in later. But we will be featuring victory games as an adjunct to avalon hill but what are we talking about on this show right now judd what are we getting ready to discuss the victory point games the late great kind of not late great victory point games that's right victory point games and if you'll notice i was uh just looking for you know i did this logo on our our top five this is going to be the fans top five we'll be looking at uh, their comments in the uh, comment section on YouTube. But what I found when I went on BGG is they've got a brand new logo that's listed as a 2020 logo. So that's what I put. Ooh, you and I both, yes. So uh, we, are, we are folks of re refined taste. Great minds think alike. <laughs> that is right. So what uh, what I've put on the little photo log now is what is listed as a 2020 logo. Um, and we will definitely take comments from folks in regards to where some of these designers have gone with their games. But I wanted to add in because Dan Masterson sent me a little tidbit saying that Napoleon 20 is being featured for with decision games as well. He said, in case you want to know, that's where one of them has gone over was to decision. Oh, the 100 Days. Yes, there we go. Days That's the Napoleonic 20 series. They made a bunch of them. Four of them went to GMT grouped up as if you're familiar with Fading Glory. But yeah, it's uh, basically a one rule set and 20, 20 counters on the maps. Kind of a cool system. It solos very well. Yes, it is our lacquer. <laughs> so let's see. We have well, three also. Trevor Just is here. Ron Nicholson's here. Vocal Bite is here. Uh, let's see. Who else do we have in here? Kyriasis is here. Uh, he has uh, his list uh, posted. I was just looking at that. I have it ready to share screen to see what people have said. Um, let's see. Uh, who else is in here? Dave, is it Doge? D-O-G-G-E is in. Uh, Nathaniel Robinson. Um, Enrique Romero is here. He says, he said, Nathaniel, Nathaniel, I'm almost done with season four of DS9 for you, man. Uh huh. And he says this 
yet another mandolin player. And I'm not liking the way that the, the answers are coming across here. That is interesting. I went with a subdued theme. Let me try if it does this. That there you is, go. That is what I'm looking for. Did not like, was that, was that a dry COVID cough? That was a drink in your water cough. Dude, I had to call the doctor yesterday after two weeks. You know, I knew I was way past COVID because I knew if I called him two days after and said I had an allergy, sure you do. Come in and get a test. Been there, done that, not fun. So I called him yesterday and said, every time it rains, I cough. We got three days of rain two days ago. I'm allergic to something that grows out here around late July, August. I said, I got no fever. I got no chest pains. None of that stuff. I got no COVID toes. So, yeah, I said, I just don't want to come in because I don't want to get someplace where I might get COVID. So, yeah, they gave me a prednisone prescription. Stuff does wonders, but you stay up all night. <laughs> it's like, I am going to live. Wow. I mean, I take that stuff at like three. And, man, I went to bed last night at two and I was still wired. Goodness. John it Connor. wonders on the cough, though. <laughs> John Connor's here. So you've had the COVID test. They've done the whole nasal cavity Whatever. Yeah, I took my daughter in for <clears throat> to a doctor for something back in like May or something, June. They started opening and um, she had a fever, but it was just one of those little, it was barely, and it was one of those gone here today, gone later today things. Sure. But we both went and got tested. And it's funny, I thought they went in the back of your mouth like to gag you or something. Uh -huh. And I wrote my boss and told him I'm getting a COVID test. I won't be in for a couple of weeks until I get the results. And he said, don't let them get any brain matter. I didn't know they go up your nose. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I hear it's pleasant. I've not had it. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes. Yeah, so we have Vorpal is uh, fed up with COVID phobia. Sure. Uh, there's some fear with it. That's for sure. And, you know, like I said, uh, uh, part of, I think the war gaming nature is I can't wait for like a year from now and we can see all the numbers and compare. I was watching something with Australia where they'd had a, a spike, uh, even in deaths, and it's their winter months down there right now. But they had an, a cool little addendum or, or positive addendum. Their flu-related deaths are drastically down, both they think because of social distancing, maybe mass, also because, and this is a, a little more on the, on the dark side, but they believe that a lot of at-risk folks who would die from the flu may have passed because of COVID. Now, all that was just numbers, but they were saying their to their death due to flu, which is they could show standards for like 20 years, was way below. So from my, my statistical side, I was kind of thinking, you know, a year, five years from now, to look back at the numbers, of course, what you'll look at is what are the standard deaths per year, straight across the line, maybe at certain risk populations, and then how did they move and what changed? But those are statistics for way later, not now. But that was interesting that uh, that a lot of folks had not been passing from the flu, which would have normally got a certain percentage of people. Um, let's see. We won't go into any farther than that because one of my videos where I just touched on a few things with statues uh, was temporarily flagged as possibly to be demonetized. And then that must have been what uh, Judd refers to as their just some analytical bot that picked up on some words. And then it looks like it got reviewed by a person and got greenlit. <laughs> but as Judd says, uh, I think one of them was that man with the Charlie Chaplin mustache in Europe. Bad that, man from yeah, Germany. <laughs> a bad man from Germany uh, who who had a a group of people that uh, did bad the third things. bike yeah the third bike man right I, I, I the flying of the third bike I mentioned that in the gaming video the you're saying bike right it, it, bike like a bike. bicycle you're right I'm with you because there's an algorithm that hears certain things on a total side note, you know, people, most people know I'm a sergeant with the police department and my best friend and my very first partner on the streets way back in 95, 96, uh, and going into the future was now the commander of the bomb squad. And I called him on a cell phone uh, asking about some call we were on or something. 
And so mid call, I'm asking questions that he immediately recognizes are probably triggering an NSA algorithm because of the words I'm using. So he pauses and says his rank, his name, the police department, that he's the bomb squad commander, and then gives out his, apparently if you're on the bomb squad, you have an FBI number that relates to your training. So he gives that out and I go, what are you doing? And it reminded me of you because he said, well, now when a human has to listen to this, because I guarantee it just got flagged, um, they'll know that they can close it very quickly and easily based on the information I just gave. And I'm like, huh. And I was asking because there was a call that referenced basically a, uh, let's just say a, uh, a firecracker, <laughs> a big firecracker. And so the questions I was asking, he felt would trigger a, a non-human algorithm with a, a company that probably monitored. So enough of that. <laughs> what do you want to add in terms of victory game? Okay. Point game. I Sorry, thought but... I'd show this. If um, <laughs> if anybody wants to discuss these games, throw your comments up, questions. If you want to ask about stuff that neither one of us have played, there's a big group here. Hopefully somebody knows. But I have played a crap ton of VPG games. So I'm going to throw them up here. If you want to ask questions, comment, blah, 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 and we'll go into the top five. But I thought, hey, since well, I, I got questions this week about – um, getting picking up games because hey, a lot of them are out of print. Are they worth getting? Because you're going to be paying a steeper price. So here they are. I'm going to fire through them. Target Leningrad, <laughs> Blood Red um, Banner, the Alamo State of Siege game, um, Battle for Moscow, and the expansion. Sorry, the, the glare is terrible. Astro Titanus, I always hype that one up. Bulge 20. Uh, there was a second game about the Scheldt using the system picked up by, I think it was Holland Spiel by the same designer. Okay, um, moving on to small box games. Zulu's Ooh. on the ramparts. That's the one I wish I would have got. High Treason, yes, it's still on the shrink. I had it, unshrinked it. Figured I couldn't play it with anybody because it's very much hidden information. Sold it. My daughter had a school thing, a uh, school exercise where she got to play a lawyer and thought she might want to play it, but I haven't got to crack the shrink yet on the second copy. So you re it. It. Huh? You oh, re yeah. They got like a super deluxe thing on it, too. The Chosen Few, one of the few Korean War games I ever see. Autumn and Sunset, got asked about that. I used to have that on the previous version as well as Zulu's, the folio. In Magnificent Style, if you want to jump on that Kickstarter, you better get it. I think today might be the last day. Worthington's doing a Kickstarter on that, republished. Real Star 2, I mentioned that on my um, uh, honorable mentions. Really good 4X game. Sign of the Pagan, Richard Berg. My hat's underneath the keyboard. I can't grab it. Mound Builders, it was in my top five. Yeah, you interested me with that one. AD30. Um, I've had that in my honorable mentions. I, these are my box. You saw these last week in my top five. I made custom boxes to protect them because they're so valuable. We must tell the emperor Malta besieged. Pretty cool little groovy game on a rare topic. Cuban independence, Cuba, um, a splendid little war. Uh, Empires in America. I've had both editions of that. My number one from last week, Dawn of the Zeds. Um, you showing everything you own here, right? Yeah, cruel necessity. You want to ask about any of these and say, "Hey, I got a, I got a question this week from Tom asking me what was a good price for Zeds because he was looking for us. So I found one for him. By the way, if you're looking for stuff like that, let me know. I'm really good at finding bargains. Um, Nemo's War, um, and then the ones I no longer have. I'm putting them alphabetical order: the Barbarossa Campaign, Caesar XL, Circus Train, Forlorn Hope, Gettysburg, the Wheat Field, not the Corn Field, Habsburg Eclipse, Hero of Weehawken. Luthen Frederick's Greatest Victory. I'm probably pronouncing this wrong because I don't speak French. Levy and Mass. It's the but state of sea game on the French Revolution. I the Lost the, Cause. I hmm. did see the word Cornholio earlier in a uh, deal from Trevor Just. And I think it, Cornholio. Yes, I think it referenced uh, your cornfield. Paul Koenig's Market Garden. I had the Eindhoven and Nijmegen games. There's three in it. Paul Koenig's The Bulge, Six Panzer Army. I could... Talk about that one. Toe-to-toe um, -to -toe nuclear awesome. combat with the Ruskies that you had in your top five and Trenches of Valor in the expansion. Wow. So if I you want to ask that. about any of those, I let me know later and play it and replay and want to geek mail me. Go ahead. 
Air Jordan, A I R J U D D E N. It's like Air Jordan, except with my name. Joe gets less funny with time. It used to be really hilarious in the late 90s. Right. <laughs> Trevor Justin, I think you may have a problem. It's called a cardboard addiction. You know, I paid retail for very, very few of those games. I told you they're really popular on the pay at Fords. Sure. And I did lots of wheeling and dealing and trade and math trades and all kinds of stuff. What we're saying is in order to alleviate you of your addiction, I think we're going to have to take some of those games off your hands. Well, I'm selling two of them. <laughs> so <laughs> I just got to get on BGG. And um, oh, sorry. And I meant Hell's Gate. I showed that. One other thing was I mentioned last week, just because I hate to leave any stone unturned. I mentioned that Herman Lutman had a second zombie game that's really good. It's a little more war gamey. It was Dead Reckoning. I never can remember the name of the game. Petra song from the 80s, but I knew it was a popular phrase, and it's cool twist of the zombies. But uh, anyways, that was the game I mentioned if you got curious. Wow. You like being on full screen, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he says it makes him get nervous when he just sees himself there. That's why I'll do that whenever possible. Oh, Leuten. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I do not speak German either. Thank you. Leuten. Well, all I had <laughs> ones was uh, was Hell's Gate, Philip Sabin. Um, um, oh, go ahead. Uh, yep. Uh, Twilight of the Gods. This is uh, Chris Cluey's uh, game, and I think this was just like a uh, pre-sale kit. Um, there were some things I didn't like about it, but I'm not a big uh, CC. Well, it's not CC. Yeah, it is kind of a CCG game. And then Villainous Vikings, which you showed that, Voyage to Valhalla. And what, um, were, these, what were these little uh, style, this this boxed version? Where, did they have a name to them? What do they call them? I don't know. I called them the small box. It was nice because they each ran about 30 bucks. They were a real good price, and you got a pretty good quality product. I got a question. Did I mention the Lost Cause? Yes, I had it. I mentioned an old state in an old um, ham tag video back in 2013 because I think that was the first victory point game I ever had acquired. Um, state of Siege, I think there are 13 of them. There may be more by other publishers. I had one that wasn't VPG. It was a test playtest kit called Constantinople. So I don't know if I included it or not. Anyways. The reason I had so many solitaire games in my – actually, my entire top five was solitaire was I realized because I play that Bardius Con every November where I do the 30 solo games in 30 days, and those victory point games really jump in there, and I play a lot of them. So you they're the ones that, that keep hitting the table more me. frequently. Huh? Bardius Con, you named after me. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> no, my friend Rob emailed Bardius. I mean, it's BGGs, right? He started it as a five-day solo con, and I turned it into 30. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm allergic to pay in retail. That's me. I'm a, I'm a wheeler and dealer. My buddy calls me Trader Joe. Um, but the um, anyway, the um, I decided, I noticed when I did the Bardius cons, certain ones were constantly hitting it every year, and some of them are falling by the wayside. And I decided I really wanted to get my state of siege down to eight. Right now I'm at nine. Down to eight? Man, that's yeah, I, I had 13, so I, I lost cause is one of them to win. It was okay. It wasn't as good as the others. Oh, you kill me. Plus, the expansion just ruined that game for me, too. Um, but I'm mean, play the game, leave the expansion alone. Um, but I think it got picked up by somebody else and redone. Um, I don't remember the name of it. You'd have to geek mail me or something. I saw it up there. But oh. um, Click the if you click it on BGG, it ought to say re implemented as or click the designer's name. But yeah, that's a, I did have it, but it it met the great purge. And basically, I've got my ninth one, the one that hits to at least hit the table. So it's going to go and I'll have my eight. <laughs> so before we go in and screen share where we won't be able to see all the questions or the comments back and forth, does anybody have any specific questions on last week's show before we go in and share? what the fans listed and uh, we'll wait because we do have, we got 25 eyeballs in we're 20 minutes in and we haven't shared the list yet. I usually like to get into that pretty quick, but I don't have a problem because there's actually not as many names or not as many folks that had enough games to get a list of five down. So what we're going to show isn't going to take nearly as long as when we were doing some of our other publishers. Okay. So, and again, for clarity, this is Victory Point Games. Victory Games will be done next week. 
which whoo -hoo, I'm excited, but uh, we wanted to work in VPG right now um, and, and that well last week. So, and what is really interesting, um, what I will say in kind of a wrap up is I, as I looked at even everything that they put out, it was prolific. They were putting out, they were letting, it was such a low barrier for entry for design and designers that you just had a lot of stuff hitting and coming out. And, and they kind of slowly started to build some momentum. You know, these little folio games, these small box games, you called the bigger one like Cruel Necessity was the gold banner, right? That was the Well, anytime they redid it, um, Ottoman Empire. Uh, uh, sorry, Ottoman Sense. That's the gold banner edition. The first one came in a folio. Got it. And then they, the gold banner was the laser cut counters, mounted maps, nicer, a bit nicer, thicker cards. Have you ever played the original ones? They had little cheap, flimsy cards. Um, and, um, Anyways, that's what the gold banner was. It didn't necessarily have to be a big box. Got it. Okay, so it could be these little boxes as well. And then the slip cover design, and then they got a little bit more fancy as they moved on. But what I was going to say was just what you just even did a wrap through, wrap through, a roll through of what you own, you can see the proliferation of, of games. I don't know the full count. What is it? A hundred different games that they managed to put out? Just probably five. I don't seven. remember. They had a lot of expansions, which was actually a really, I mentioned that it was a real cheap money making ploy because it should have just been, you got very little for your money. The shipping cost as much as the expansion got and it. they should have just included it as, as, um, as advanced rules. So they had a lot of bad business ideas. Part of why they went under. There's a story I was actually told by an insider and said, yeah, you can share this one. So if you ever want it, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, but you can't share it here. No, I can share it here. He said, go ahead. Go ahead. Share it then. Just Okay. Um, the Barbarossa campaign. Actually, I don't have it. I got rid of the game. It was okay. Um, he was telling me that VPG would not sell folio games to retailers. But the game was really expensive to start with. Remember, it was like 50 bucks or something. And then the shipping was really high. So it was stopping people from getting it. And they wanted to get it retail at the store so they could save the shipping. So the obvious move is if you're not going to sell it in, in the folio to the retailers, put it in a box. You got all these boxes with slip covers. Just make a printing. These are easy to do, especially when you have your own in-house printing. Throw a slip cover on it, kick it out, and get it out there to the people that want it. But Alan decided he wanted to redevelop the entire game. And you could you played the Germans in and he wanted to have an option where he could play the Soviets. This grand scale redoing got on the pile, never got done, obviously. And you're sitting there missing out when people are demanding something, give it to them. It was common business sense. But it was just one of the many. I've heard all kinds of stories about bad business decisions and burning bridges with with um, designers and letting stuff like that. Leuton game. There was supposed to be a whole series. It's going to do a Saratoga the Gettysburg um, wheat field game, um, a whole bunch of these were supposed to have a whole series and they just all died on the vine for various reasons. So yeah, just a lot of bad business ideas that just yeah. torched a really good idea. Right. So what you're saying is take it out of the folio, um, print, maybe do that puzzle map or whatever they do, and then put it in the box, make the slip cover, put basically the same game out, not in a bag. Yeah. And then if it still sells great, you could say, you know what, this is still a great seller. Why don't you go make it playable from either side? We'll do a deluxe version that will add in some new stuff. But that's only if it drives well as a uh, as a box version. Yeah, I mean, VPG did plenty of reissuing of games where they added stuff to the rules and redeveloped it. Here's a really good example. Mm -hmm. So that would have been a way to tap money for twice if you're looking for that. But I mean, if they're well, wanting it now, don't put it on the development for years to wait to get in their hands. Get it to them now. And the way they had it where they had print on demand, it wasn't like they were doing they were going to buy a thousand copies and get stuck holding holding the bag. If the retailers want it, they can order it. Boom. You got it to them. Yeah. So, Dave, I still like the second edition. I never messed with the third edition of that. The Zeds. Um, no retreat. I'm oh, sorry. There's a question on there. No retreat. Ancient Battles, that's, that's interesting. I don't have that, but I just got the Worthington Kickstarter. 
So I like the idea behind it. Um, no retreat, the, the Russian front. And I think they might have done another one. They might have done the North African. Yeah, that came out in Victory Point Games. And then that was part of their deal with GMT where they collaborated with them. They did no retreat. And then they did um, the Fading Glory where they took the four Napoleonic Games. They were going to do that with the State of Siege. And there's a story there I'm not at liberty to talk about. <laughs> but um, that's anyway, a tease. Up, that's a tease. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it but, um, yeah, it, it didn't end as well as, as some like to think. But, yeah, anyways, GMT took it and gave it the deluxe treatment because, you know, GMT is GMT. And um, it won. I mean, you saw no retreat to Russia front. It won the Charlie. Award. I thought personally, my opinion, is I don't make the rules. So I don't think a game that's reprinted and made nicer deserves to be in the Charles S. Roberts. I think it should be a unique design. Plus, I was grumpy because Band of Brothers is up and I thought it should have won because it was an original design. But such is life. I don't make the rules. Um, mm -hmm. But that thing was a great seller. Um, interesting. I had a heck of a time getting the rules because people were saying it was as easy as memoir. And so I treated it as such. Hey, I'll just figure this out as I go. I was playing a guy in Vassal. And then I just got aggravated with, can I advance in the mud or do I advance three or does the mud, you know, contradictions and the rule. And then I was talking to the guy at BGD and he said, dude, the, the GMT rule book sucks. Go get the victory point game version and play it instead. I've heard that from a few folks, but man, there's a lot of people that swear by the GMT version, but that's what that was about. Hmm. And then I think, yeah, then he ran off and did like med front, Northern front, Western front. Now he's redoing the Eastern front and a new, new game. So, so. Before, before we go into questions, uh, when we do victory games next week, ambush can't be on my list because it is in my hall of fame. So it won't be able to be on there. Um, Wings of Glory, the Korean War edition, he says. That's what he'd like to get a hold of. Uh, Vorpal's got uh, MiG versus uh, Sabres. And there's a dude in France, says Dave, selling VP's Barbarossa secondhand for 50 euros. So you can go get that, Judd. That sounds like a deal. It's 50, I don't know 50 euros, how that relates to U.S. dollars. but That would be like 70 bucks, I think. Woo! Wow, you'll be surprised. I mean, it is it is what it is, like my daughter likes to say, some vine or something. But it's a um, it's really cheap components. So you will be disappointed when you pay a lot and pop it open and look at it. Um, it definitely needed a gold banner treatment. But it's a I don't know if it could reprint. You think it would? I mean, somebody like Worthington jump all over and make a Kickstarter. They kick it. They kick out their $2,000 minimum and make all kinds of money off of it. So I don't know who's behind that. Borpo, we'll talk about all these little sub. Actually, open fire would fit, but uh, we'll talk about all that tomorrow. Let me see. Let me get off of this. I am going to screen share at this point in time. So let me get this going here. I'm not going to follow you on the screen. I'll just listen to you because last time I wasn't able to see the comments. Got it. Yeah, they were, uh, well, we were off sync with some of the stuff that was even coming in. So let me see. I had this. There we go. That should be it. We'll see if that, yep, good. So, and uh, let's see. There's been a little bit of movement in that already. Interesting. I wonder what that was. Oh, that's why. I had it all keyed up for a reason. All right. So we've got Matt, if I can stay on my uh, list here. So Matt Curiosus. Curiosities, which he says, uh, the top five from Matt the Greek in Michigan. I like the intro there. Five was uh, Hunt, the unknown quarry. Four was Bulge 20 with the expansion. Three was, Man, Paul, yep, three was Paul Koenig's D-Day, American Beaches. And then two, again Koenig, Mark, uh, Market Garden, Nine Megan Bridge. And then one was the Arduous Beginning. He does have some honorable mentions. Go ahead. What do you have to say about that, Judd? There's something interesting in that arduous beginning. I don't know if it's part of the same system. I mentioned I had Target Leningrad and Battle of Moscow. I didn't say I had Objective Kiev. I used to have it, but it was the C3I version, but it's still a victory point game. That was back when they were in their collaboration. And I don't know if the arduous beginning was part of it. It was like you could – they really weren't tied together, but they all used the same system, and they all analyzed different parts of Barbarossa. Then I think he combined it and added a bunch of it, made that thunder in the east or something. They were working on a new version of Battle of Moscow because I made the Vassal module for it, so it's the only place it's ever been seen is on my hard drive, basically. 
Mm. But yeah, I don't know if the arduous beginning was part of that or not. It always interests me. It's a cool little system. Got it. As a, uh, Frank Chadwick. I won't always go into the honorable mentions, but Matt has a great comment here. Honorable mentions for No Retreat, Hell's Gate. Uh, no, not one of these were on your top five, but that's what makes this series of videos so much fun and ready for some discussion. And then he's got some further details that if you want to read, you can go into under his comments, which are great. And by the way, please do that. If you're on YouTube, do your list just like Matt did. And then if you want to fill in with a lot more details or your thoughts, perfect place for it. Uh, I always said there is no limit on what you can write on there. I had a couple guys get with me and say, hey, sorry, I made such a big post. I'm like, I don't care. I will uh, generally read the part that I'm interested in and maybe more, maybe less. But combat board games, number five is Ottoman Sunset and Habsburg Eclipse, technically two games, <laughs> but they are better played together. So don't judge. He snuck them in there together. Hey, you're the guy that did the Borg, so you, you're the last person can judge, dude. <laughs> that, I created, I broke all kinds of rules. The the rules of this list, you can break them. So you there can, you you go. Can break them. They're you more gotta, guidelines, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're guidelines, and you got to be able to, as long as your rule makes sense, and you can justify it in your own mind, you should be good with your own list. Maybe I won't be, or maybe Judd won't like my list, but on that one, he was like, good point. Uh, four, in magnificent style. Three, Zulus on the rampage. If I owned that and had played it more, um, I think I only played it like one time, and I didn't even finish it at a con or something. Uh, Which one? That is Zulus on the ramparts. Yep. Um, I, I think that would have probably been on my list. Wings for the Baron, which uh, Greg played a whole lot of the last time I was at VGG, which had to be like three years ago or so. Um, let's see. Cruel Necessity. Uh, in his opinion, the best states of siege game. So he's got his opinion in there. Again, we can't see the comments, so I know you guys can cross-comment with each other. But when we're in here pulled up on this, we can't see it. Maybe at some point I'll get an extra screen and I'll be able to see it, but not at this point in time. You guys keep hey. coming amongst yourselves. Go ahead. There's a comment, John Connor, about how much for the old Ziploc games, and Trevor kind of nailed it. How much for the old Ziploc games selling for? Depends on the game. If you have Ottoman Sunset, it's you might get – I mean, I'm not saying you're going to get nothing for it. Maybe 20. I don't know if you're lucky. But the reason why is because they redid it in the gold banner, so people are obviously going to want the gold banner first if they can get it. If you get something like um, Barbarossa campaign, that one could go for, as you saw, 70 and um, there's my ferocious attack dog. And, um, but, um, oh, what was that? Hero of Weehawken, something like that. That can, that seems to be a really popular one. I sold mine. And actually, I think I put mine up on a pay it forward, but it's mm -hmm. always a really popular one. So it kind of depends on the game. Bulge 20, you could probably get something for. Um, definitely, if you had um, the two Carey, Steve Carey games, we must tell the Emperor Maul to besiege. You can get an arm and leg for those things. I wouldn't hold out and ask for any less than 100 for them because somebody will pay it. Got I wouldn't be like those Amazon people that put it for a thousand, hoping somebody, some sucker out there. But, but yeah, anyway, so that's kind of how the how that goes. I got a buddy that's selling mound builders just because he said, hey, they're in demand, and it seems to he got what he wanted out of it. He played his 50 times or whatever. So. Sure. Now, here's a good point. When you're when you're not watching this on a screen, you can see the comments from your side. Yep. Good. I, I like this format. So if you see a comment come up that you uh, want to uh, address, let me know since I can't see them and you can do what you just did. I think that works well. Okay. Bjorn, Bjorn Frank, uh, he's only played four games from uh, Victory Point games so far. Um, but he must have something. So he's got Wings of the Baron 1, Wings of the Baron 2. So that's why he's got them listed. He really likes that game. Nemo's Wars 3. I would like to play that. I never have. Dawn of the Zeds and Chariots of Rome. So that's interesting. Uh, let's see. What do we got? We got Forest Cole, Five Fleets, 2025, Imperial Stars 2, Bulge 20. Uh, two is Thunder in the East. Also like their Barbarossa, but like this one a little better. Honorable mentions before he gets to his number one. He's following our format. Napoleonic 20 series. 
Just saw something on that uh, from Dan Masterson. Astra Titanus Moonbase Alpha. Yes. Last King of Scotland Golan. I have that oh, one. Oh, I forgot about that one. Sorry. That's all right. Dawn of the Zeds. And then his number one is Ancient Battles Deluxe. Yeah, the Last King of Scotland. That's one that's been hovering on the edge of my radar for years. Just because it's an interesting topic. And I saw the movie with Forrest Whitaker. Yes. Um, I don't know if you saw that or not. He was phenomenal in it. Um, anyway, the um, yeah, that's one I might keep my eye. I thought I was done with VPG as far as having everything I'd ever want from him. But um, John Connor put, I have Waterloo 20 and D-Day. He's asking about selling him D-Day, Juno Beach. Waterloo 20 you might have a problem with because it was redone in Fading Glory, the GMT package. And then it was redone in that one I held up, Waterloo uh, um, 100 Days 20. So it's been redone re-upped twice so you might have a problem the other one the d-day juno beats the d-day games seem to be pretty popular so you might have some luck i mean i think you could pull at least 20 maybe 30 something like that i mean throw it up there and see if they don't if they don't take it you know you can also put entertaining offers throw it up as an auction any number of ways to do so there you go you just put d-day juno about 40 to 50. um so anyways so yeah you could pull it pull it for those very nice. Derek Leader says, please don't accuse me of cheating by showing the top 10 list. Cheater. Cheater, Derek. <laughs> he says, this is not my list with a wink, just for fun. He put my VPG or his VPG games into the into the uh, Pub Meeple ranking uh, engine, and he did all this. But we will roll down to what he disagrees with, that, but here is his top five games. Five, Cruel Necessity. So I liked how I kind of did this. But Cruel Necessity, no comment needed. You guys nailed it. Uh, Trieste, an as asymmetric three-player only card game. A lot of fun. Three, Ottoman Sunset, his favorite VPG State of Siege game. Love the theme. Churchill, Gallipoli, am I saying that right? Royal Navy running the gauntlet. Um... Two Chariots of Rome, spiritual successor to Avalon Hill Circus Maximus. Very similar feel with updated components and rules. That's cool. And one, High Treason, manipulating the jury in an infamous Canadian trial. So I've never even heard of that. Can That's the one I held up, the one I said my, my... I saw you with the shrink. You got it in shrink. That one. I had no yeah. idea what that was when you held it up. And when he said infamous Canadian trial, I'm thinking this is what I'm talking about, how you were able to have some fairly obscure themed topics for this. That's the one I was telling you about. It's, it was game was actually made by an attorney. I hung out with him at BGG. He lives in, he's a Canadian resident, Amer American now. He got his American citizenship. But yeah, he's a, uh, lives out in Colorado. Oh, really? And he's the guy I said, he's the only guy I ever met that had better work stories than you. <laughs> I mean, that's funnier, man. He, he he can tell some pretty good. Like my life's so boring compared to you guys. Um, I'm gonna but, have uh, to hang out with this guy. Yeah, but anyways, yeah, he's an attorney, so it's not just a. He knows what he's doing. It's pretty cool because it has just all kinds of different tendencies um, about the jurors, like on a four or five different things that might make them favorable or less favorable. And I forget all the legal terms, but you go through and you you know you strike the jurors from your pool. Mm -hmm. And you you got you play cards that can present arguments, and it's it's really really fascinating concept. Problem is, it's not really a two. I mean, a solo game. So I've struck, and I was going to make the vassal module, and I wrote Alan about it. And he said, "Sure," I wrote his art guide, and the art guy never wrote me back. And I well, I guess they really don't. I don't know what was up there, but I never got anything back, so I never made the vassal module. And at this point, I'm I'm not I'm too lazy. I hate games with cards because you got to scan them crop them all that it's just a pain so um anyways um so i never heard backs so and never made the module plus i don't know i hate making modules where i never get a play in which is the vast majority of them so that was one of those i was only making if i could especially if i could get an opponent so anyway. kabuki, kabuki. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number, uh, number five magnificent style in magnificent style pick up the charge at gettysburg you referenced that that's like a push your luck game I went and looked at that after our show because that interested me. Four, we must tell the emperor. Three, uh, again, Astra Titanus. You'll say, woohoo. Woohoo. There you go. Two, infection, humanity's last gasp. 
theme is fitting in today's world, which if you're watching it 15 years from now, we're in the midst of the COVID, the COVID. One, Nemo's War. Uh, she says, I always say that Ian O'Toole is one of the best graphic designers in gaming right now. And uh, let's see, the larger box for Nemo's War is now the new standard box for the game, or at least was for the most recent printing. That's and, cool. Uh, I would love to pick that up. Just kind of, kind of recommend, if, you, if you're a solo gamer, I mean, if you like to play, yeah, not a, very few games I could recommend more highly than Nemo. I mean, plus, unlike the two out of print one, oh, actually, yeah, those two I mentioned, the carry games, they go for an arm and leg. Nemo's is a little more reasonable, but I mean, the components are just phenomenal. Nathaniel, um, Nathaniel Robinson, sorry, do you have something else? Oh, I was looking at John's comment about Caesar XL, whatever it's yeah. called, it's pretty much fun, didn't have much replay value to us since the game started to boil down the same situation. There is a, my buddy, Daniel Berger, who made um, Caesar's Gallic War and Hands in the Sea. He made, if it's under BGG's files, he made a variant, and I would highly recommend that game. It was terribly underdeveloped, which is real surprising for VPBG, but then I got the comment from one of the insiders that, yeah, at that point, they was kicking stuff out the door pretty quickly and not mm. been in the time that they used to. But because uh, leaders are huge and you draw cards and you might have four or five leaders to my one or something like um, the solo game um, Empires in America. If if you had three leaders and the British had one, you can never have two more than the other side. So you have to discard down. And if they had more, they had to just it kept a parity going. And then they were like events that could help you buy, spend money to buy cards and they might help your opponent and you have to play them. So um Anyways, he took he made a system that would smooth it out. He's a game designer, knows the stuff, hands and sees amazing game, but it smoothed it out. Highly recommend that. But yeah, that I had Caesar XL and the um, expansion. It was a really interesting take. Joe Miranda, who always has cool ideas, but very undeveloped. And I ended up trading it because I I like Julius Caesar more as my Civil War game of Rome. Um, but it is a pretty cool idea. So anyways, you need more background on that one. But if you do it, definitely try the Daniel Berger um, variant. That's perfect. I like what you're doing here. Nathaniel Robinson says, uh, one, Wings of the Baron or Wings for the Baron. It's one of his top 10 games, I'm assuming, like of all time. Two is High Treason, the trial of uh, Louis Raiel. Three, Imperial Stars 2. Woohoo! Yes, he's, he's only played five VPG games, but these I at least consider stellar. So, Man, Imperial Stars 2, if it had been a lot of companies, that would have been in my top five. Because mm. Space Empires 4X, great game, know the designer, cool game, very, you know, got a lot of hype, been out nine years, I think. But that game takes kind of the essence of it and boils it into something much smaller, simpler, which that's not a difficult game to start with. But plays in about an hour and a half, two hours. And every game is different. Four different maps. I joke about terrain and outer space, but I mean, it's like nebulas. If you cross them, things happen. Yeah, I know three dimensions go right above and around it, but oh well, it's a game. Work with it. But And the planets, they're like inverted. So when you take them over, you flip them over, you get benefits. So it keeps everything shaken up and different. So very, very, very cool game. And then when it was retailing, it was only 30 bucks. That's what blew me away. Yeah. Um, Vietnam Rumors of War, I'm not familiar. I'm assuming that's not VPG because I thought I knew their entire catalog. But anyway, yeah, Imperial Stars. Oh, the other thing about it, when VPG announced they were sold and everything was hard to get, I got the first expansion. I went right out to VPG's website and got it. Mm. The second expansion was looking like We Must Tell the Emperor's expansion. It was nowhere to be found. And finally, I just gave up on it because then I learned it really was more Alan's idea than um, Chris's idea. And I like Chris's design style more than Alan. I'm nothing against Alan. I just I like Chris's design style a lot. You know, he did Astro Titanus, Nemo's War. So I like his design style a lot. So I, I thought I'd just give up on that one. But if you see it, expansion two, that's very valuable. Hmm. So. so Rich, so and Rich and I, uh, I basically have all the Holy Grail mentioned. And his list, I'll give reverse order, is one Nemo's War, 
two Malta besieged mounted boards, self done and works great. So he, he went and mounted it. Three Ottoman sunset. Four, we must tell the emperor with expansion, special poker sized and quality cards. <clears throat> Five, don't know yet, as many are still in shrink or never open. In magnificent style, Pickett's charge at Gettysburg, wings uh, from the Baron, etc. Wow, he's got all those still in the shrink. He says, uh, my wife said I should unload some since I have an overly large collection of hard to get games that sit there unplayed because I have way too many games. I think she has shopping plans. I wanted to say, I think she's quoting my wife. <laughs> So, uh, because same deal, my wife will be like, how many of these are you able to play in a year? And I said, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. I would have to be retired and dedicate 40 hours a week in order to probably, and I bet you, I bet you if you and I could do 40 hours a week for a year straight, we could easily play through my collection. <laughs> I don't think I could on my man. That Vietnam game by Victory Games, that's like a six-month game. Well, we're not, we, got to complete it. we could definitely get a day in of that. Well, that would be yeah. only one day. So we could do a three-hour version of it. Maybe. Vorpal, if you're on BGG, send me a geek mail. I'll talk to you more about that. I'm just not really at liberty on the video about rumors of war. I realize it is. I'll tell you why I won't get it. But nothing against the game, just something else. But anyway, here, Bart, trigger warning. Ah, we must tell the emperor. Valuable as that game is, you better believe I sleeve those cards. And I put in a, if you remember that old Star Trek Next Generation um, collectible card game, which yeah. you buy it and it's really not a game because um, you don't have enough to play it. I have like four or five starter decks of that. I, somebody gave me one. So I use them as stiffeners. You put them in the back of the, put them in the back of the sleeve so it stiffens the thing, shuffle them, and then you slide your little card in. Game this valuable, Malta, you better believe I sleeve that dude. So, sorry, trigger warning. I know you hate sleeving them, but that well, game is too valuable to I risk. Hate, I don't hate if you do it. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> I just don't like holding plastic when I'm playing a game. I want to be want to be in touch with that wood fiber. <laughs> there you go. All right, let's see. So, Rich M, though, if you do decide you need to get rid of something, I don't know, maybe Magnificent Style Pickett's Charge, I would like to at least try it, but who knows? I have a whiskey collection that also drains my money, so I may not be able to give you a competitive price for that. Um, let's see. Um, Herman, Art, if you ever want to, if you ever want to try them out, you work just down the road from me. Just let me know. <laughs> I may stop by at work sometime and borrow it, uh, but I won't put stiffeners in them. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. All right, I'll do whatever you want if you let me. You you would probably have to watch me as I played them so that I didn't damage anything. Herman Lutman has a comment, so he doesn't have a list, but he says uh, he directs it at, at the show here. Thanks. Uh, he also loves scotch, which he's got to go watch Scotch Test Dummies. Uh, he knows a little about the different varieties. Uh, he likes Johnny Walker Black. He's tried Glenn Livet. Um, he'll need some guidance. And then I thought, sorry, I wasn't even planning on reading that one. He had one where he talks about, oh, there it is. It's further up. Thanks for the great support for Dawn of the Zeds all. So he's speaking to everybody. He really appreciated it. There are so many great games that were put out by VPG. And uh, he thanks Alan Emmerich uh, for getting uh, him his start in game designing. And now for his shameless plug, and that's what I wanted to get to, you still have five days, but that was five days ago. So you're on the last one now. Yeah, I and think it, it might have ended because I got that message Okay. Saturday morning. I think it's a 14 days. And that was what you plugged at the beginning of the show here as well, that there's a deluxe version of Magnificent Style on Kickstarter. Good gaming and everyone stay safe. Thanks again. Uh, let me glance and then I'll come out of the screen share. I think that was it. I wanted to give, oh no, sorry. Here's this one. Gregor Gregors. He's got five Ottoman Sunset. Four Zulus on, Zulus on the ramparts. Woohoo! Napoleonic 20 series, Habsburg Eclipse, and number one, Nemo's War. And he kind of agrees, I think, with you here, Jed. He said, Nemo's War tells the best story for him. Uh, the second edition is beautiful. He's a big fan of Vienno Tool as well uh, and goes on. And there's some great comments there, even with, with uh, Zulus 
on the ramparts, which I would like. To. Oh yeah, and Trevor yeah. Jump. Trevor. Zeds and Nemo is probably the best narrative generators I ever saw come out of VPG. I mean, those games are narrative like V17 is a narrative, except you get a lot more levers and choices, levers to pull, choices to make. Yes. And then Trevor Just here is number five, uh, TIE, Israel, Israeli Independence. Uh, this is a tie. Sorry, see, TIE. Oh, I was going to try to think of TIE stood for. I know. I was too. I kept looking. I'm like, TIE, but I hadn't read the whole thing. So there you go. Sorry. TIE. There's so many acronyms. I'm thinking, what is that? Twilight? Yeah. Um, Israeli, it's a tie. Just say a tie. Israeli independence and bulge 20 is his number five. Rules breaker four. Uh, Paul Koenig's D-Day series. Three Zulus on the ramparts. Very nice. Two, we must tell the emperor. He says that's going for 170 bucks. And one, high treason, the trail of Louis Rael. Uh, Man, I'm going to drop him a line and tell him his game's getting all kinds of love on this list. Yeah, you should. And he's got he's thrown in here. Zeds and Nemo are amazing, so he excluded them. <laughs> um, you know, go A's. go A's. The I ain't gonna judge. I mean, <laughs> like the whole Borg thing. Do what you want, but yeah, the um, I wouldn't judge anybody for putting Napoleonic Twenty series because really, the system of rules <laughs> is so similar to all the games, and then there's just little nuances for what's unique to each one. It, it they all feel like you're playing the same game you know it's a good series and the um, same with the the uh, market garden games in d day I mean it could have been made into one big game with a lot of maps so hey you want to put them on I get it I mean I, how do you decide that I mean is better than Eindhoven I played them both so uh, I now granted obviously I like Nijmegen better because it's 82nd airborne but that's personal bias just because it was involved <laughs> but yeah so I yeah, that makes perfect sense. You know, the one I was curious what people I thought about putting this on BGG as a poll. Which one of the state of siege games have you played and what are your favorites? And the one I kept noticing popping up was Ottoman Sunset. And that game gets a lot. I mean, that's the guy who created the series. Darren Lings Levin Levinoff or something. I'm probably saying his name wrong. But he did Israeli independence. He started it all. I haven't got to play that, but I've heard it's the simplest one as far as the fewest decisions because he was creating it kind of like the Alamo game. It didn't have a lot of choices. But he did Ottoman, and he did the Soviet one. Oh, I, oh, I had it too, and it was on C3I. The, um, uh, uh, I forget. Somebody will pop up the name of it. Red something. Um, but, um, yeah, and then he did the Hasburg Eclipse. And the cool thing on Ottoman – and Habsburg is you can tie the games together, share resources, because the two countries are right by each other. It's both World War One. Share resources back and forth. There's ways to tie it together. You can either play it as a cooperative or just play both games at once. It didn't do as much for me as I thought it would, because I like Ottoman a whole lot better than Habsburg. And I just and I can actually funny thing, I'm really good at Ottoman. I keep thinking I'm playing the game wrong, but I keep reading the rules. These games are really, really hard to win. Um, and I think I'm batting over 500 in this game, which is kind of shocking. And um, I don't, you know, it's not like a guaranteed auto win thing, but I can win a lot more than I probably do in all the others. Hasburg, I never beat. And um, when I played this, I just ended up finding I was always trying to help the Habsburgs out by stripping away from Ottoman. They were both getting clobbered. Soviet Don, that was the name of it. Um, yeah, that's why I didn't count it either, because uh, technically I didn't have the VPG version. But um, anyways, yeah, Ottoman Sunset gets a – I mean, Hasbro comes second. So when I felt it – when I played it, it felt like I was playing an Ottoman expansion. Sorry, an Ottoman expansion, I should say. So it didn't feel as original as the rest. But, man, Ottoman gets a lot of buzz from people. And it's really – I think for me, it's, if you're familiar with it, running the straits where the British were going to shoot right up that strait and try to hit Constantinople. So you have to spend actions early on building your defenses – and if you don't, if you waste too much, you don't know when that card's coming out that they're going to try to make the run. If you don't have your defenses, they can fly right through and beat you for an auto defeat. And um, it's not a force moving along a track with each card. It's you're going to do this once. You you go against each one of the defenses, and if the British keep winning, they just keep advancing. So one card, boom, you know, five six rolls later, you're done for. And then there's like a card that gives you a free defense you can build up in there so do i want to build this defense or play for that so it, it's a it's a lever i really dig compared to the other than the hasberg one but yeah i wondered and i saw that pop up on a whole lot of people's list so 
be curious to see if just if what really is the most popular autumn i mean if it if it is that popular so let's see um off uh, we've talked decision games gmt um what are the other publishers just off the top of your head and i'm i'm tracking on two but i can't remember that have picked up some of these designers games oh. Worthington picked up Ancient Battles Deluxe and um, and the one I just mentioned, the Pickett's Charge game. Yeah, maybe. And, um, anyways, I'd I don't know what's going on with Astro Titanus. I haven't talked to Chris, but, man, I know they'd be all – heck, they told me they'd be all over it. But, um, anyways, yeah, that would – they've done it. Um, who else? I'm trying to think. Oh, decisions picking like yeah, Napoleon. I thought a lot of decisions decision would pick up stuff because Joe Moran is kind of their guy, and I was real surprised that I think Zulus and maybe the um, French and Indian War game are going to be done by Victory Point Games in their current form. Whoever tabletop, whoever has them, yeah. but the Napoleonic Twenty is going over to there. What's interesting was. Um, there were other designers who did Napoleonic 20. It wasn't all Miranda. Cause like in, um, fading glory, that was four different designers. Miranda was one of them. I think Emmerich did one, Steve Carey and Lance, I forget his name. He was the developer. Um, they all did a different game in that system. So I don't know if those guys are going to run off and do something else or what's going on with that. But I don't know of anybody else I've heard picking up their stuff, but it's still pretty young in the game as far as, you know, I don't know if, um, well, I guess Herman already took his to um, Worthington. So I don't know if he would look, because he does a lot of work with uh, Tiny, what's that, Tiny Man or Ty, White Dog? I don't know. I always mix those two companies up. He does a lot of work with them. Hmm. Oh, another cool State of Siege light game is that um, a spoiled victory Dunkirk, which is out there, and it's going to be re, it's being redone now. If you run into that, that's kind of cool. It's a, it's it has a feel of State of Siege, but there's some differences. Um, who's this company? Compass Games. I'm, the that, I'm not sure if that's sarcasm or not. Obviously, Compass Games is big. They redid uh, 1944. Yeah. So, um, they've done. What are some of their other more recent ones, Judd? Command and Color Strikehorn. I have Spartacus, not the Euro game. End of an Empire. Crusade and Revolution. War in the Wind, uh, Festering Europa, love that game. They re they did redid the Hearts and Minds third edition, and oh, remember that game we had Red Poppies, mm -hmm. the World War One made one of our ham tag lists. Uh, Worthington had that, they picked it up, so they okay. and they've done two games. I think there's a third one coming, so they're making a whole series out of it, which is what that game really deserved—a good tactical World War One system. And that, yeah, I need to get with them. I would love to read. Stuff. I mean, yeah, I, Compass, their website's terrible for prices. I mean, you know, 115 bucks or something. They always have a fall sale, I mean, a Christmas sale where they mark them way down and get them to what you're used to seeing. And then their pre sale prices, like GMT's pre sale, you know, they're really, really good. And generally, the website's so high on stuff, people assume everything's high. Because remember somebody griping about France 1944 cost a bunch. And I went to the website and I was like, I remember I was like, dude, it's like 55 bucks. That's high. Oh, you know, so. And then anyway, um, yeah. you had that one company, the online company that's always got great. Oh, he just mentioned it, Nathaniel. Um, NWS Online. If you type, yeah. if you go to your search right. engine, type that in, NWS Online, it'll pop up. I think it stands for Naval War Simulation. But that guy is, he's the lowest price I've ever seen. For And Miniature Market, if you run into them, out of St. Louis, they got like five dollars shipping, but it just it's it's on the slow train, but it'll get to you. Yeah. Um, Trevor asked about MMP. I only have the Mike Ranella games, the three, and I used to own Lincoln's War. I don't even have five. So I mean I could throw ASL on there because Greg's taught it to me, but that's it. I don't even like Lincoln's mm -hmm. War, so that's I'd have five, I think sucks, but it's all I got. Um, sadly, but yeah, there's a lot I'd like to try. Greg used to talk about that victory denied all the time. I wanted to try that out. Yeah, that's multi man publishing. They've been re putting out not only ASL, but they've been putting out the uh, um, great campaigns of the American Civil War. I have been grabbing those. Like they had, um, oh, what, what did they call it? What was it? Gettysburg 2, uh, Jackson's Way 2, or something, Atlanta. 
um, Above the Clouds. Been picking those up. Um, uh, Charlie Kibler was doing the maps. He's doing the maps for him. I hear it's the best operational system, and it's all about how do you get your your armies into the right area, or your your uh, units into the right area, your brigades and things and, and terrain, and it, it looks great. Um, and the hard thing with MMP, if you don't get it, when it finally comes out, they seem to go out of, yeah, they go out of, out of stock real quick and then they're like triple the price. Atlanta is ours. That's right. Well, the other problem is their, their P500 is like P500 years. I mean, it's not too. You hear stories about guys doing a P500 and their credit card expires. And it's, you know, it's like, it's, yeah, I had it on there three years and forgot about it. Yep. Um, oh, an old Meta Gaming list. That'd be cool. Um, I don't know if you, even if it wasn't Meta Gaming, if, if you wanted to do old pocket games, I got a ton of those or have had a ton of them. So I don't know if that's a possibility. Mm. I mean, Task Force used to do them, TSR, Meta Gaming. I think uh, before we do that, you and I will do a review of the uh, latest uh, Midway movie. Oh, shoot. I got to see that. You know, that's been. That's funny. Was I made a comment when my daughter and I saw uh, went up to New York and saw Hades Town back in January? I commented it felt like it was like two years ago because the whole COVID thing. It's like just everything changed. Yep, I've been yeah, the, I've been pre-ordering as well, John. And uh, you pay, and then you never quite know when it's going to come. Oh my goodness! When they did um, Monty's Gamble, I mean, if you ever saw something that's begging to be made on Kickstarter, you've already got the artwork. Everything's done. You know, you could actually put it out there. If you go into China or whatever, you've got your system set up. Artwork's already finished. You don't have to develop this thing. It's a developed game, blah, blah, blah. Kick, do your Kickstarter. You could promise it. It's like the time Worthington did the Korea game and promised it in a month. And I thought, really? And it showed up in three weeks. They had everything done. But mm -hmm. I'm like, you got all the artwork. You don't need to do anything. Just do a Kickstarter. You're guaranteed the money. If you do your homework, you're guaranteed to turn a profit. You have to turn 10% of it over to Kickstarter, I think, the amount, but you're guaranteed. And I thought, why are they not doing this? The only thing they ever did the Kickstarter on is Lincoln's War, and Kickstarter's not the reason I have problems with that game. <laughs> um, but it's a, I was like, it made perfect sense for them, but they're stuck in their ways, and, man, they, they're slow. And Shifting Sands, that's one that desperately needs a reprint, but it's on the – oh, shoot. I, I'd be surprised if you saw that thing by 2025. Question: What do you think of these online game conventions and tabletop simulator? I've never done tabletop. I don't. I never even researched it mainly because I'm a vassal guy and I know vassal, so I could make. Even if I don't, they don't have a module for it. I can make one. Even if it's, even if the company's anti vassal, all that means is I couldn't have published on their site. I can make one and email it to you. And I've done that with like KGB versus CIA and, and um, Two Day Mayo, stuff like that. You know, send it to Rob and we just play it. So I never looked into them. Online game conventions, I'm kind of like, what's the point? Just yeah. somebody's, making a, somebody's making a buck. We know we can play, hook our Skype up and play. So why am I paying a third party guy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they're trying to get, you know, where you can see maybe new releases and maybe get some of the deals on certain games and but um, yeah, so the online stuff doesn't interest me at all. Uh, I'm a well, big Nathaniel, people person. Nathaniel's comment on Compass, yeah, they've been like a big it. Them and Revolution have been the big it companies for me that I've been seeing as the big rising stars. Because well, Compass got John Cranz on board, and they jumped out and made a bunch of games people have been begging for, like the Korean War. And, you know, and then like France 1944, I don't think a lot of people were asking for it, but they put it out and it turned out to get a lot of pretty good buzz. And, and um, you know, then they do a lot. They do. They got their little group of designers. I see names pop up, but they've done a lot of cool stuff. Good. And their components have really went up a lot because I got that Red Poppies game. I got in a trade a couple of weeks ago and looked at it. I was like, man, they've come so far between that and France 1944. Mounted maps, rounded counters better artwork on it so they've really and then revolution i can go on about them all day too they've got a really cool business model going on i don't know do you have revolution games they come in the folios no no i don't think i have any of them so oh let's do that that guy you interviewed 
Mike Ranella. Mike Ranella. Oh, he's yeah. He does a co-publishing thing with him, so I think he's got like four games, five games with him. But yeah, the one of the guys you interviewed a while back, I forget his name. He did a he's it's about two or three months ago. He he did a few games with them. On I think it was like medieval stuff. I always wanted to take a look at it. But anyways, sorry, just going down a rabbit hole there. Ron here uh, using wings for the Baron as a model. Tom D. Yes. Games for the players. Games. Just remember, Tom, any questions, post them on BGG because I'm subscribed to that and I generally answer within a day. Yep, you've got that list. So. Let me look over some stuff. We'll get a little feedback on your end if you can bring your sound down just a bit. We may try earbuds at some point in time just to see if that helps out. I think it's just the way this works. We talk so much and then it'll pick up my voice coming across on yours sometimes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Derek Leader, I've been playing Brief Border Wars from uh, Compass. He's having a good time. Throw in any stuff you guys got going right now. We're in our last probably five minutes. I do have to get ready to have Mark on in about 55 minutes. That's already been posted. Any questions you, uh, you want me to I ask? I thought you said 2 o'clock. It's 1 o'clock my time. Okay, yeah, I think he said 2 o'clock Central because that kind of made me raise my eyebrow earlier, but I thought, okay. Who I did? Yeah. Uh, shouldn't be. Early, early in the vid, so. Yeah, last week you said 1 o'clock, so I made a mental note. Let me uh, let me look and see what I've told him. It should be 1 o'clock is where I set my uh, show at, but uh, while we're on here, you can fill time, but let me see what I've got. Just confirm. Anytime we're dealing with time change, God knows I may mess it up. It's not pulling up when I do it that way. Come on. Uh, do, 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 do. Well, this is boring to watch. Go ahead and fill time, brother. <laughs> I'm do a song and dance for you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to get it here. It's pulling up a bunch as soon as I put it in. Okay, last week you said one, and then you said two this time, and it made me wonder if he's talking Eastern, but. It's one. So if I said two, that would be my error. Two it Eastern, is... one o'clock Central. Yep. Okay. It is one. He's he's actually just sent me a message saying, we still on. How do we connect? I haven't used my equipment since he, uh, since he had to move some stuff around. So. Um, let me go to you. Fill some time with questions so I can answer this real quick. Okay. Anybody got any questions on these games, comments? I threw a whole bunch of them up there for you. <laughs> um, want to get really confused, try to calculate time in Indiana. Are you all on one of those, like Arizona, where part of your state does daylight savings and part of it doesn't? Here's a boring story I can tell you. We were spending the night out in uh, – Oh, Yuma, not Yuma. It was, a, it was an Arizona town um, up by Utah, and it was part of one of the reservations, and they did respect the daylight savings, and the rest of Arizona doesn't. So they have all these clocks up, like they're a train station or something, telling them what different times are. And I go up there, and I look at it, and it says, like, central time is 11, Pacific time is 10. And I said, your clocks are wrong. And they go, no, 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 we do air, we do, we do daylight savings. They go, forget about that. Pacific and Midwest are two hours off. No, no, no. It's because of daylight savings. Like, whatever. Okay. <laughs> they were so anyways, there's my boring story about that. So let's see. Tell us about your favorite VPG game. Um, obviously, Dawn of the Zeds. A second, how long does Target Leningrad take to play? About an hour. It's really, really fast. Um, finishing making my B25 counters will start punching Stalingrad 42. How come Greg never roped the two of you into wings for the Baron? I don't remember why. I looked, I do research on the games, and I usually have, I do it and I forget it, and I do it and I forget it. So I end up putting comments on my wish list to remind myself why I didn't get a game. A lot of times, three players, three players is generally a huge turnoff for me. If I can't solo it, you know, Aaron and I play a lot of two-player stuff, so if the topic's not inter something interesting to him, I usually pass it up. If it's three players, four, there's very few multiplayer. If we ever want to do a multiplayer, I have enough to do it, but it wouldn't be a really strong list. Um, 
next battlefield I want to visit. Oh, shoot. You know, I don't know. Wilson's Creek, I really wanted to see it, and I finally got to. Um, oh, something about that Target Leningrad. Um, it's a pretty cool idea in this game. The Soviet mech units are have a question mark on one side. You probably recognize it from the old Jim Dunnigan system. Um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Guderian's something or other from Avalon Hill and I think SPI. Anyways, you you shuffle them up, you stir them up, you stick them out on the board in their spots, and neither side knows what their strength is until they are engaged in combat or engage in it themselves. Then you flip it over. So it's kind of a, you know, about six, seven of your counters. You don't know what strength they are, whether good or bad. So it's a really, really novel idea. And the solo is great, too. Last, uh, last question from Rich M, and then I'm going to have to get ready for Mark here. I've responded okay. to him. We are 2 o'clock his time, 1 central time, my time. It's already posted, so you guys can see the next show that's coming up, and it's it's geared into 1 central time, so you guys can join in in that in about 50 minutes. Go ahead, Judd. What about a Babylon Okay, we need a Babylon 5 board strategy board game. Here's why it'll never happen. Um, you have to pay licensing rights for a game that very few people know about, and Warner Brothers is pretty much – thrown salt all over that franchise. I don't think they like the writer. He's kind of a control freak, but the reason why is because he doesn't do stupid Hollywood stuff. Um, <laughs> and they won't, I heard they won't even put it on their own streaming service. And they're really just about all things um, licensed. So yeah, that's even if you made one, I've dinked around about making a state of siege of Babylon five game. I always thought it were good in coin four different empires, four different agendas. And they're but, getting ready to do a space version. Yep, but it's it's just I never going it. to happen. So, anyway, humorous note: I went through DS9 five days, five direct ripoffs of Babylon Five to the point my wife is watching one with me, and she rolled her eyes and said, "Really?" And just like her first episode, she watched of it because she'd heard me talking about it. But yeah, I mean, there's a scene where there's like this lady said, starts asking Cisco in a dream, "Who are you?" And I'm like, "Really? That was a whole episode of Babylon Five. Who are you? You can't expect others to lead if you don't know who you are." It's like, you know, just crazy stuff i mean my favorite's when they had went to the vorlon system but i could go on and on but who cares <laughs> he's in one seven real react i haven't followed baseball at all this year i mean the half season just doesn't interest me so um actually nathaniel they had the entire bible in their hand they knew how the whole b5 story was going to go before before they started filming so yeah that's why they just ripped i mean the ideas aren't just this and that they're just such blatant ripoffs. Like, holy cow, guys, are you have an original thought? But I finally ran into a really good one. So maybe that's neither here nor there. <laughs> All right. We are going to sign off. So, again, next week we will be talking victory games. I'll give you a little tidbit. You may see something that Mark Herman did that's also getting ready to be GMT style, baby. And it won't be on my list, but I'm definitely going to be talking to the CEO of Victory Games about it. It won't be on my list as far as next week, but you may or may not. I don't know. I'm sure it'll show up on uh, somebody's list somewhere. And that is it. Anything you want to add, Judd? Nip. All right. Hang on. Uh, I, hey, English can't make your list. I don't know. Did you say that? That's why I got distracted. I did. I can't. That's why I'm can't. showing it now. <laughs> yeah. Open Fire might make my list. <laughs> that's tanks there's no word of ambush in there see you guys later thanks for tuning in thanks for the great comments judd you hang on